say, you're all familiar with the advancements in today's cars that make the body, power plant, and chassis so quiet. However, unless doors are properly fitted and body hardware is secure and operating properly, an owner can become awfully annoyed. So, this month we're going to have a powwow on body service. First, I want you to meet Roger Andrews, the service manager. Raj has agreed to give us some of his time to review body service adjustment points that are often misunderstood and frequently overlooked. Nice to have you with us, Tech. We're all set to get going. Fine, Raj. But first, let's introduce Tony Lido, your body technician who's going to help us. Hiya, Tech. Thought for a minute you were going to pass me up. Glad to give you and Raj a hand. Where do we start? Well, I think the front door on this Plymouth two-door sedan is as good as any. What we cover on this door applies equally well to the front doors on four-door sedans and suburbans. Right. And these instructions also apply to comparable Dodge models. So let's start with the hinges. Although they're new, the adjustment procedure is about the same as on past models. They give you adjustments in or out, up or down, or fore or aft to get proper fit in the opening. Uh, that's not only for appearances, is it, Raj? No, not by a long shot. The ease with which the doors can be opened and closed also depends largely on proper hinge adjustments. Overall quietness of the body, and particularly the doors, is another factor, Tech. Well, I can see you guys are on your toes today. <laughs> I better watch myself. Go ahead, Rog. Well, when you close a door, you want it to latch with moderate effort, not have to slam it so it jars the whole car. You see, when you close the door, it's supposed to compress the tube weather strip and weather cord just tight enough to form a good weather seal. This is the way the compressed seal would look. How about it, Tony? That's right. The amount of compression you get on the weather strip tube depends on how far the door is set in the body. That's where the in or out adjustment comes in. Tony, how do you know when you've got the right compression? I generally use a shipping tag or a piece of heavy paper about the same thickness. I put it between the door and the weather strip. With the door closed, if there's a slight drag on the paper as I pull it out, I'm pretty sure the compression is right. But if I can pull the paper out or it tears when I pull hard, I know I've got trouble. I make this check about every six inches around the door. Uh, you're doing fine, Tony. Keep it up. If the paper is tight at the lock pillar and has only a slight drag at the hinge pillar, it generally means the striker plate is set in too far and is pulling the door in too tightly against the weather strip. This, of course, means the striker has to be adjusted outwardly. We adjust the striker so the door latches with moderate effort. We also set the striker up high enough to give the door a slight lift as it closes. I'm glad you mentioned that last point, Tony. A slight lift helps keep the door quiet. I check at the hinge pillar from the inside. If there's a heavy drag on the paper, it usually means the hinges are adjusted in too far and there's too much pressure on the weather strip. How do you get at the front door lower hinge bolt that comes in from the outside, Tony? That outer hinge bolt is a bit awkward to get at with a box or open-end wrench. Besides, it's easy to drop the wrench into the opening and hard to fish it out again. So here's a trick I've learned. Block the door open about halfway between the first and second check stop. Use a universal socket and extension to reach the outer hinge bolt from the outside of the car. That's a good tip, but I'd like to add a word of caution. Be sure and tape the edge of the door and the edge of the body panel so the socket extension doesn't scratch the finish. Rog, looks like you're trying to get a tip in edgewise. As a matter of fact, I am, Tech. We run into a few jobs where there was too much compression on the weather strip in one or two places. If the door squeezes the weather strip too much in just one area, it'll be hard to close the door. In a case like this, we leave the hinges alone. We remove the striker and close the door. If the door contacts the weather strip in one area along the hinge pillar, but doesn't touch it all in other areas, the problem's in the weather strip location. I hope you don't try driving the weather strip away from the door. We don't, Tech. We pull the weather strip away from the hinge pillar fence. Get a good grip and pull it away with your fingers. Then we use a fiber block to straighten the fence and relieve the tight spot. Push the weather strip back onto the fence using the heel of your hand. 
don't use a hammer or mallet to seat it. If you do, you'll spread the weather strip retainer so it won't lock in place on the fence. Besides, a mallet's apt to mark or damage the wind cord. To finish the job, reinstall and adjust the striker. That's a good fix, Tony. And it ought to work equally well for correcting air and dust leaks caused by a section of the fence that's too far away from the door. It does, Tech. We haven't had too many jobs where the fence had to be realigned, but when we do run into one, straightening the fence is the quickest and easiest way to correct spot binding or air leaks around the doors. Do either of you have any quick, easy fixes for wind noise? We just happen to have a wind noise diagnosis tip up our sleeve, Tech. Actually, the hardest part of correcting wind whistle in the vent wing area is figuring out just where the noise is coming from. Now, here's what we do. Close the door and use masking tape to seal off the space between the inner front edge of the door and the windshield pillar. Also, seal along the leading edge of the vent wing with masking tape. Take the car out and drive it at the speed at which the whistle came in. If the whistle is gone, you'll know you're on the right track. Without stopping the car or changing speed, pull the strip of tape off the windshield pillar. If the whistle comes in with tape removed, the noise is probably coming from the outside windshield molding. Seal the space between the windshield side molding and the rubber windshield weather strip with rope type sealer. Now, this usually takes care of noise from that area. What if the whistle doesn't come in when the tape is pulled from the windshield pillar? In a case like that, Slowly pull the tape from the vent wing a little at a time. When the whistle comes in, you'll know you've pinpointed the spot where correction must be made. Do you have any suggestions on correcting vent wing whistle and sealing? Yeah, here's one. If the vent wing weather strip doesn't seal all around the glass, loosen the pivot clamp screw. Then shift the glass to get a uniform seal all around. Tighten the screw. I've noticed a few cases where the vent wing lower frame gasket projected forward of the frame and interfered with the weather strip. That can cause a whistle, too. I just trim it off with a sharp knife. I have a good tip that applies to Plymouth and Dart. On these models, the upper vent wing pivot is now ductile. It can be easily reformed without breaking to improve the wing fit and seal. Open the vent and push inward on the pivot with your thumb. Don't push on the glass and don't use a mallet. Thumb pressure will spring the pivot inward and solve a lot of vent wing sealing problems. That's a good time-saving tip, but I want to add a warning. Don't try to bend a die-cast vent wing pivot. If you do, you may break it off. Before I start whistling, someone out there better lift the needle and turn the record. Tony, do you have any words of wisdom on the subject of push-button door handles? Actually, Tech, we haven't had more than a couple of cases of high push-button effort. These were easily corrected by door striker adjustment and linkage lubrication. If push-button effort is high, the first thing to check is striker adjustment. If the striker is adjusted too far inward, pressure on the rotor and push-button linkage is bound to be excessive. A striker that's too low can cause the same problem. Next, adjust the lock linkage. When the linkage is properly adjusted, it gives positive action. I always make sure the set screw is properly tightened to hold that adjustment. Uh, if that doesn't do the trick, remove the door trim panel and examine the linkage for bent or binding parts. Lubricate the joints with lubriplate to assure free linkage movement. Good going, Raj. Now, why not review sedan front door glass adjustments? Okay, Tech. It's most important to make sure the glass is squared up in its opening. Glass that is not squared up will contribute to hard operation. The top edge of the glass should be paralleled to the opening when the glass is almost fully raised. Now, if it isn't, adjust the regulator arm mounting plate. If the glass is squared up, adjust the lower end of the division channel in or out to relieve binding of glass as it is raised and lowered. Often, this is the only adjustment needed. Since it can be made from the underside of the door without removing the trim, it sure saves time. Finally, lower the glass until the top edge is just flush with the window opening. The glass should lower without binding and yet not be loose in the channels. 
If there is any looseness or binding, adjust the lower end of the division channel fore or aft. The purpose of this adjustment is to remove excessive looseness of the glass in its channels without introducing any binding. Also, adjust the down stop if necessary. That should wrap up sedan front doors. Any suggestion on sedan and suburban rear doors? Yes, just one, Tech. Make sure the glass is squared up in its opening. Everyone ought to know by now that you do that by loosening the pivot bracket screws and adjusting the regulator pivot. To raise the front of the glass, lower the pivot bracket. To lower the front of the glass, raise the pivot bracket. Except for the downstop, that's all there is to rear door glass adjustment. Now, suppose I cover sedan quarter glass next. Go right ahead. You have the floor, Raj. On two-door sedans, it's also important that the rear quarter glass be parallel to the quarter glass upper frame from front to rear. This is controlled by the window regulator position. To raise the front of the glass to square it up, raise the rear of the regulator. Lower the rear of the regulator to lower the front of the glass. Next, adjust the glass runs to assure smooth operation. How's the best way to go about that, Raj? Well, in or out and fore or aft adjustments are provided on the lower ends of the front and rear glass run channels. With the window in the half raised position, loosen the rear glass run channel screw. Then move the channel inward or outward to center the glass in the run. At the same time, loosen the front channel attaching screw and move the channel rearward against the glass while holding the glass in the full forward position. Next, run the glass down until the top edge is even with the belt line. With the rear channel attaching screw loose, move the channel forward or rearward so the glass has about one-eighth inch fore or aft movement. Be sure to recheck the adjustment after tightening the screw by raising and lowering the glass. Make the final adjustment by loosening the screw, reach through the hole in the front face of the quarter panel and move the channel in or out to center the glass in the runs. And those adjustments should take care of any binding or glass rattles. Raj, do you have any good tips on Plymouth and Dodge hardtops and convertibles? Well, let's step over to that Plymouth hardtop in the next stall. Tony's pretty well up to date on these models. There's one real important point about these jobs, Tech. Be sure the doors are properly aligned before starting any glass adjustment. Glass adjustments won't compensate for poor door alignment. The next step is to be sure the vent wing frame is properly positioned to provide a good seal at both the windshield pillar and the roof rail weather strip. Anything special you want to mention about the vent wing, Tony? Yeah. In addition to the two adjustments at the lower end of the division channel, which are similar to the ones on the sedan models, don't overlook the vent wing tilt adjustment at the lower front corner of the wing. That's a screw stud adjustment that tilts the wing in or out to get a good seal. Turn it in to tilt the top outward, turn the stud out to tilt the wing in. Just remember that the vent position has a lot to do with the window glass location and may require a little compromising to get a good all-around job. Right. And I've had pretty good luck cleaning up rattles and hard operating glass by correcting the fore and aft locations of the rear guide channel. Good point, Tony. This channel should be set to allow about 1 16th inch glass fore or aft movement. Then be sure the top edge of the door glass lines up with a roof rail weather strip. If an adjustment is required, raise the regulator arm mounting plate to raise the front of the glass. Lower the plate to lower the front of the glass. Then adjust the up stops so the upper front corner of the glass is flush with the top of the vent wing frame to ensure good sealing. Speaking of regulators, loose attaching screws can cause them to rattle against the inner panel and create noise. Any movement of the regulator due to looseness can also cause the glass to bind in the run channel. Loose pins in the regulator arms and in the arm and pivot assembly are other possibilities. This looseness could cause the arms to bend and the glass to tilt and bind in the runs. When we get one of these, 
I restake the pin and apply some lubriplate to the joints. Say, wouldn't it be timely to review the new rear door and quarter glass stabilizing systems on Plymouth and Dodge hardtop and convertible models? Okay, Tech. The big difference in this design compared to the conventional glass run design is the glass and frame to which it is bolted travels up and down on two new guide tracks. Four sets of nylon rollers mounted on the glass frame engage the tracks to guide the glass movement. And those roller springs must be positioned downward to keep the rollers from binding. The adjustment procedures for the rear door glass on the four-door hardtop are similar to those for the quarter glass on two-door hardtop and convertible models. Here are the differences. On rear doors, adjust the regulator pivot bracket to get a flush fit at the upper corners of the rear and front glass and uniform spacing between the top edge of the rear glass and the roof rail weather strip. On rear quarter panel glass, adjust the window regulator to get a flush fit at the upper corners of the door and quarter glass and uniform spacing at the roof rail weather strip. Adjust the upper rear guide track sleeve nut, then the upper front guide track sleeve nut to get the proper glass fit at the belt line. When properly adjusted, the glass will make a light contact with the belt line weather strip. Adjust the lower ends of the front and rear guide tracks in or out to get the proper seal between the glass and the roof rail weather strip and proper alignment with the front glass. When properly adjusted, the top edge of the glass will curl the outer lip of the weather strip in against the inner sealing surface of the weather strip. With the glass raised, adjust the up stops so the upper front corner of the rear glass is flush with the rear corner of the front glass. Two up stops are used on the rear door glass, one on two door hardtop quarter glass. Then, with the front and rear glass fully raised, adjust the front guide track fore or aft to get a good fit between the rear edge of the front glass and the weather strip on the rear glass. You've got to be sure you don't bind up the front glass with that adjustment, Tony. I close the door and raise and lower the front glass several times to make sure the rear glass weather strip isn't too tight but still makes a good seal. Then I open and close the door to check the fit with the front glass. I also raise and lower the rear glass to make sure it isn't binding. If there is a binding, I loosen the fore or aft adjustment at the upper end of the front guide track. I then lower the glass and realign the track to eliminate any binding. I also recheck the fit at the belt line. Well, fellas, that about takes care of our story on door and glass adjustments. If you keep these various adjustments and the reasons for them in mind, you won't have any trouble keeping your customers satisfied with their living room on wheels. Customer confidence in your ability to render quick and satisfactory service is going to pay off in more dollars in the till. So long. Thank you.